Good morning, wherever you may be. Call me Felix. And so today, I have a special for you, and it is a goat feast. The goat of all goat feasts for you. You may recall last Christmas, we did our own goat feast, but that goat was a little too, uh, let's say, too young. Don't lie. It's, it's freaking good. And given the state of affairs, and you know, we're halfway through 2020, it's almost Independence Day back home in the States. You figured with all the bad stuff that's happening, especially with the COVID out there, we need to sacrifice a big adult goat. We need to sacrifice a goat. So perhaps to reverse all the bad juju that's going on. Other than that, we're gonna serve this goat, I think four or five different ways. So this is practically, uh, the sequel of what we did at Christmas, except we're doing this on the 4th of July. I should tell you where we are, because, I mean, you know, you need a setting to all this. Um, we are in Pidigi Locos Norte, and we are in a barangay called Calusa. So it's only about eh, a minute's drive away from the town center, and you really feel like you're in the countryside when you're here. And, it's, and this is one of my relatives' houses, and... Um, you see there's a massive yard here. You raise chickens here. And right next door are some rice patties. Lots and lots of rice patties. Oh, the little kitten's eating the goat shank bone I had discarded. They dispatched the goat just within a few minutes and then Torch the goat for about 10 minutes and they're just peeling the furs off the goat. And as you can see, this is a more mature goat uh, compared to the last one. So as you can see here, the skin is still torched. So unlike the last time, you know, JP Shaman Butcher, uh, they've kept most of the charring intact. And that's really vital for our Kilowin dish, which is um, like a goat salad that's served a bit chilled. Four dish goat. Four dish goat, Four right. Dish goat. So we're going to do Kilowin, and then we're going to do Pinapaitan. Uh -huh, papaitan. Uh -huh. Caldereta. Caldereta. And maybe Igado? Maybe Igado. Okay. Swam. Swam. Swam, sorry, swam. So two soups, an appetizer, and a main dish. Ah. I've never had it before. I never had it with goat either. Don't lie. It's, it's freaking good. Normally how we prepare a goat, we kind of do it with them in three or four recipes, which are the pinapaitan, which is this bitter bao soup with innards. We do kilawin, which is the cold meat salad. And then we do caldereta. But we're going to do something really special because we can cook Indian food in the province because Auntie Joe can cook Indian food. So we're making ourselves a goat biryani. And of course nothing ever goes to waste so this blood will be used for our schwam or innards and blood soup. And of course we have emasculated that poor goat and those testicles are going to be roasted and I think it's going to be included in our kilawin. Okay, well, the part that you've all been waiting for, they're going to perform surgery on this goat. So after all that manicuring and pedicuring of the goat hairs, the goat fur, this is the best part. You're gonna slice those organs. Slice for those organs, yeah.
Tapi yang di Hongkong, untuk lagi yang berat baik. Kita dakkan. Ilalat na dito tayo Lepas ni, nanti lepas ni. One hour after. Executing the goat. This goat has been properly segmented and organized too by only two executioners here, two butchers. All that goat's head is here. It's been charred and um, cleaned thoroughly, very thoroughly. And as you can see, they're making a lot of chops out of the meat carcass itself. And you'll notice that the skin has been set aside. This is going to go in our kilowen, which is our cold meat salad. And then this will go in as... Now, I asked Auntie if she could make a uh, goat curry. So I'm not quite sure if she's going to do a mixture of either goat caldereta or um, goat curry or both. I think I asked for goat biryani because she can also do cook Indian food. Which, of course, I'm always looking forward to. I'm just making quick work of that. And on this side here... These are all the organs. And as you note on the footage here, that it only took about a minute or two just to make that incision and just pull all those organs out. And all the organs will go into our soup. Uh, we're making two types of soup today, I think. So there's going to be a blood and organ soup called schwamm, and then we're going to do another one with um, other, the other organs and some meat for peanut pie time, it's just a bitter bile soup. And one of the things I'm looking forward to here is how, just like in my prior goat video, is how they separate the bile from contaminating the organs. So one key difference you'll see here is because they pulled the organs so thoroughly and just like clean as a whistle and seamlessly, is that you don't have to worry about any of that bile getting into the meat at all. So, you don't have to have such a tender uh, operation here because everything is properly organized and segmented. So this is really an expert butchery job in just one hour.
Okay, so here one of our butchers has gone to the side here and he's separating the bile here from the intestines. And again, bile is the key ingredient when we make our peanut pie time or um, bile soup in the innards. And um, because the goats eat a lot of grass and they're pretty snickety as far as uh, what they eat, this should smell grassy and clean taste, clean, clean smelling. I shouldn't say clean tasting. You're not tasting that right now. <laughs> And if you're curious as to how it smells out here, I mean, it smells like barnyard. But not in a bad way. And, and I'm saying that because I've caught used to it. I'm a country boy now, being stranded here for several months now. So, so I think this operation is still a little bit delicate because, again, what you don't want to do. So what he does is he, clean, he separates the organs from the bile. So that it doesn't seep through any of the um, innards. So as you can see, it's very thorough. There's a bunch of bile there. Here's the station to make our goat caldereta, which is like a tomato based stew. How the rest is really taking shape as well. Add the carrots, add some potatoes, and also the tomato paste. Or, there goes the tomato paste. Okay. And paste and bell pepper as well. Started the cooking of the schwam, or the um, innards and bowels of the schwam, yes. Which I always keep on saying it's peanut butter time, but it, people say what's the difference? Man, to me it tastes the same. This looks like the finished caldereta. They just garnish it with um, garbanzo beans, chickpeas. Oh, and pineapple. Pineapple out of the can. So dad thought this was atang, which is an offering for... Because usually when you make prepare a feast, especially here in the Philippines, 
you Cube. use it as like um, opening. Offering. Opening. Like offering to like to the uh, souls. Yes, to the souls of uh, deceased relatives. Um, and that's a tradition that, uh, that dates back even before the Spanish and before um, Catholics too. The idea of atang. Oh, and this is our caldereta. So they serve some goat caldereta already. So this is the first dish out of here. You can see. This is a lot of goat shank. And you know what? There's the price piece here. Looks like the part with the marrow. And I'm going to get this part here with the bone. That's a good idea. That's delicious. Um, and what I like most about it is the goat shank. So you get some parts of the meat that are close to the bone. And that stuff is more unctuous. It's not, you know, lean. You get uh, more tender meat out of that. Mixed with the lean and the more chew from that goat. It is really good. And again, it's not gamey. So here's our prize piece, you see. Looks like um, part of the bone. It's been like a cross section here. I think that marrow has melted into the sauce. So it's not really intact. And then you can see that's not exactly lean meat. That's hanging off there. But it's got a good texture. If you don't really like super fatty, this is not fatty at all. It's not super lean. It's just about right. And the tomato brings out some of the, a bit adds a little more sweetness too, to that dish. Mm. Mm, and clean off. And I can feel off my fork, this is tender. And it's not really lean either. Of course it's a very hearty dish when you put the potatoes, you put some garbanzos in there, and some carrots. but. It really is about the goat. Part of the Kilowin process, so uncle is just uh, slicing up, julienning them, and they kind of come out like this, kind of like O-rings. <laughs> like the kind of you will see like in canned cuttlefish, they kind of look like that. But you a little more that, translucent. Boy? Yes, mm -hmm. now he's cutting the skin. Kilowin pa, boy. Wait, you have a tone, you have a tone, you have a tone, you have a tone. Okay. This is California, California, right? California, here I come. Dad's showing Uncle how the pro does it as far as cutting Kilo Wind skin. Yeah. Although you haven't done this in like decades, right, Dad? Yeah, I haven't done it uh, for a long time. California, here I come. Hmm, <laughs> that's my good barbecue. Okay, guys, some of that beautifully grilled meat we're putting in our kilowain, which is our meat salad, with the skin. We're just cutting this up. We're also straining some calamansi here. He's gonna add the citrus to the kilowain with nice wouldn't be a, like a punchy type of sour, uh, orange limey type of sour, I should say. Not super punchy though. Uh, the pickles na dey, ti manong dey, ti ket awan. Yes, so ate, the rapid papayt na. Ay, dey ko lang arla, kwan? Bati a? Agriyo ma ka? Well, okay nga ron. Ito malap malo ko. Okay, this is a kilo win. Kilo win! So just a primer what this is. Love that skin, you can see, goat skin. Some red onion, mixed in with some goat meat. We mix it in with some calamansi, which is some uh, orange lime citrus, um, some ginger, and I think there's some sinning labuyo in here as well. And pickles. And pickles. So this is going to be a very um, meaty, a little bit acidic, a little spicy. It's a little bit of everything. 
And here we go. You mix. So I added a little extra kamansi. I really like that zest. A little bit of chili in mine would be great. And we had to add ex some extra sitting labuyo, some Thai chili. I think this completes it. Oh, there's goat brain? Okay. That I can do. You're making like a dinak dakan, I guess. So for me, they added a little goat brain in here. I was wondering what happened to that because what they were doing was they were making cross sections out of the, out of the head. And then I didn't see any brain there. There you go. Okay. Yes. This is the special with some goat brain. Well, if you can see that, it kind of looks like unmelted mayo. There we are. Let me try the special with brains. That's delicious too. One thing I really love about this with the brain. It adds some creaminess that you don't get it out of regular Kilowin. Kilowin. So, because it kind of feels a little dry, there's a secret ingredient to this, and it's the reason why it's a little bit soupy. You know what it is? It's the sweat off my brow, all the hard work. There's a reason why I asked to put a little more of the chili, and I asked to put a little more of the of the acidity, a little more calamansi, because the you get bored of the dryness. So what does it taste like? A little more moist than I was expecting because of the secret ingredient of milky <laughs> sweat. But if you put some ca some goat brain in there, ah, add some creaminess, you wouldn't have otherwise gotten. Especially now that it's been um, drained of JP's brow sweat. Don't lie, it's it's freaking good. Now, you, now you're gonna regret it. You're gonna regret it because. So I have the three goat dishes, usually of Kilowen, Schwam, and Caldereta. We haven't had the Schwam yet. It's always my favorite, the Kilo Win, because it's always interesting. Um, this, I think Dad was saying, this is probably the best, like when we were preparing it, because you also have grilled meat. You have the skin here. Kind of looks like new, like small little noodles. Some red onion, and some ginger, and um, siling labuyo, some calamansi, and some pickles. So you get a lot of like the sour notes here. There's a nice sweetness too, the spice. Um, but what really makes it for me is the cow, uh, the cow brain, the goat brain, because if you had it as is, it's a little too dry, a little too lean, um, and that's why I was thinking, ah, oh, it's a little underwhelming. But if you put the goat brain in here, it binds it all together because it adds some creaminess and some. A little more unctuousness that was lacking and mix it up with that sour mix it up with that spice mix it up with that contrast of texture it's a really great dish have you ever had dinakdakan before which is another Ilocano specialty with brains and meat this is what it tastes like too oh and every bit you have that grilled meat you have that nice char as well um, you know, like the taste of the grill. Just a little bit, and then the calamansi, the citrus uh, taste, cuts into it right away. Very refreshing, too. This is really a symphony of flavors, symphony of textures. They all just come together, and it makes you want to eat some more of it. Ooh, there's a lot more of that goofy brain where it came from. There you go. Now, if you're skittish about eating brains, what I can tell you is, if you did not know what was it was, you really would have thought it was just like mayo or cheese that's just added in there. And that's all it is. It's just a little added dairy. It does there's no funk at all to it. It's just nothing but creaminess and unctuousness. Added to a really refreshing goat meat salad. You can really eat a lot of this and not get bored. Every now and then you get a little more ginger. Every now and then you get a little more black pepper. A little now and then you get a little bit of the sweet freshness from the onion. And of course the char grilled from the grilled meat. A little chew because of the skin. 
it is a very balanced dish and addicting. All right, time to head into the kitchen and cook with the aunties. Now, they're playing Ilocano folk songs here, which kind of sounds like, to me, it sounds like Mexican mariachi mixed in with like MIDI clavier music. By the way, because we're in the province and such and people need to laugh, a lot of these songs are dirty. They're dirty connotations. <laughs> We're making ourselves a goat biryani. So this is the goat, some of the goat meat that's left over. And we're making the best uh, seasoning as possible. So we have here some cinnamon, some cardamom, some ginger garlic paste, uh, some curry powder, and some turmeric. And what else we have? Garam masala. Ah, garam masala. And where do you get these ingredients from anyway? Do you get these like locally or? From US. Oh, they come from the US. Oh, there you go. They all come from buying boxes from the States. So they don't exactly come from India, but from Indian stores in the States. Yeah. Okay. Mati rice. Mm-hmm. And we're sifting some basmati rice. Some onion. There we go. Okay, so we got some oil and some onions. So the, Auntie Jo says it's the secret to good Indian cooking. It's all about the onions. Make sure it's red onion. Oh my goodness, ever since I walked into this house, I can smell the curry. Smell biryani in here. And I forgot all about this because I was too enamored with my kilowin. Especially now that it's been um, drained of JP's brow sweat. I wish you guys could smell this. This is amazing. Indian curry here. With goat. And we're gonna make some basmati rice for our biryani too. I cannot wait for this. This might be the piece de resistance of all the other dishes. So we still have this to try and the soup. Be back in a bit. Now my second red horse here. And this is the schwam. This is the third dish we've yet to try. Or I usually call it pinapaitan. I asked dad, what's the difference really? Because I'd never really heard the term schwam until I was here. They're the same. So what this is, is a bile flavored soup. It's where it gets its color from. It's from the green there. It's more of like a yellowish in color. What this smells like and what it looks like in color kind of smells like deli mustard. What I can describe is it smells like mustard in grass. There's nothing really off-putting about it despite what's in it. So let me show you what's in here. We've got some intestines. We've got some blood cube. We have some parts of is this parts of the goat's head dad or like the, the ear or it looks like a goat shank or the oh this is the goat foot so they put the goat foot so from what i know the feet are especially hard to um cook so you boil it down in the soup and it's what causes like the sheen from that soup we don't have a spoon here so i'm sorry I'm using a fork so i think all i'll do is i'll just take some of those in here. so looks like some liver Looks like some liver and something else. An extra piece. Huh? This looks like liver and... Looks like testicle, maybe. Maybe. But what's this look? What's this plate thing that looks like pate? It's just an innard. Okay. That liver is very clean. You do get a little irony flavor to remind you that it's liver. But it's 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 lighter tasting than chicken liver too. Chicken liver has a little more richness. This tastes pretty light. I would like to try that soup if I had a proper spoon. But here's some of that intestine. Jibetrol. <laughs> Dad will try some of that soup. Well, that's the only neat way of doing it. How is it? Very good. I'm going to have to do it that way too. So I will have some soup. I'm just going to slurp the side of this instead. Just like a caveman. Thank you.
Oof, hot. Hot, hot, hot. What you get is, there is a real suppleness when it comes to that bitter. It's not too oily. It almost tastes like a, a consistency of... Like a jus, really. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's super saucy or anything like that. But I'm also saying that the mouthfeel is kind of a cross between a soup and a stew. Uh, it tastes buttery a little bit because of it. It tastes... Feels velvety is what we would say. Um, there is a little bit of a bitter flavor, but nothing that is off-putting. It just reminds you that there's a little bow. And let me see what else should I go for. There's a lot of cartilage in these bits here. Oh yeah, more of the goat's foot. There's, so this is a little more meaty than I'm used to with peanut by time. <laughs> now with a spoon. Yeah. It's not really bitter. It's just quite buttery, quite creamy. Okay. Quite creamy, quite meaty. This is how I describe the soup. Let's get some blood in here too. Mm. Nice face. Mm-hmm. Now, the blood, though, has a little more, absorbs more of that bile. So, what it does is it adds a little more interesting bitterness to the soup, because I think it's what it needs more of, is more, a little more bitterness. And it brings out the sweetness in the blood, too. It's an interesting sort of dichotomy that the bitterness from the bile kind of eats up into the blood cube. But then it brings up the sweetness as well. Oh, yeah. blimey! What's the name of this? This is biryani, Dad. Wow, man. That's biryani. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ilocano style biryani, I will say. Because we added a bit of coconut milk instead of yogurt because we don't have it here. And But it has most of the Indian spices. So, you know, might not be the purest choice, but we may do here in the provinces. In the Philippines. Once again, I really wish you could smell you could smell this because it's just very very. It smells cinnamony. It smells a little beautiful turmeric too. Some of those wonderful rich curry spices. Yeah, and it's got some of that wonderful goat as well. Wow, look at this goat here. So this goat, by the way, is very fresh, of course, because it had been freshly killed. But there are some nice parts of the meat that are tender. They're not very lean either. And I think this is going to be really special. Just like that. Hmm. Wow. Well, you know what? We have more than just goat, everybody. Not just this. We got, look at that. We got paxio. We got poklo, which is a seaweed salad. Of course, some of that wonderful caldereta. More of that kilowen. There's more caldereta. Yeah, more green salad. Some daludal, not that special recipe, but there you go. More kilowain. And those are some mussels. Oh, the mussels here are very good. And here's some adobo chili. I wish, though, they would come up with spicier chili than you can get here. But, you know, you, it is what it is. I'm going to go in for more of that biryani, though. That's amazing. I'll try more of that biryani, though, because that's a dynamite. We did add some of these local green chilies, which don't really pack a punch. They're just really, they're pretty sweet. And this mollusk. Oh, I forget the mussels. The mussels here are especially good. Or the goat with the biryani. 
That goat's really outstanding, though. And I think that's what makes it a biryani much really good. It just soaks up all that curry spice. There's a little of a coconut milk taste to it. But it's not of the sour of the yogurt, but there's just adds a little more richness. A little slightly sweeter than usual biryani because of the coconut milk. Mm. And I love the lemony essence from the biryani. Rice perfectly cooked too. Mm. Now, JP, my cousin JP, loves Indian food. And he could not be here today. And I said, all right, I'm going to save you some biryani. Um, I don't think that's going to be possible, to be honest. Now, you, now you're going to regret it. You're going to regret it because he's muscles. Here are the muscles. And the muscles here are very good. There you go. So plump. So Pidig is not real. It's... A little landlocked, but it's not too far from Luwag City, which is by the coast. So it's only like 15 minutes drive. So you can get some fresh mussels here. Despite it feeling like you're in the valley. There's that mussel again. So sweet. And I wanted to show... So I got some more of the caldereta. We will go really good with our biryani. And I got here some vegetables. They have some okra, and here's a special one that's called the uh, panlang. Panlang looks like um, an edamame crossed with a snow pea. And it kind of tastes like that too. Nice crisp green. It does have a snow pea type of taste. With green. Get some okra because eating okra is really good for you. And yeah, I love okra. More of that goat with biryani. With the, really brings out the sweetness of the goat. It's so good. You know, I think my work is done here today. So, just to recap, we cooked the goat just like we did at Christmas time, and we did it for the good old Fourth of July for the good old United States of America. Well, um, maybe, maybe, just maybe, sacrificing the goat perhaps ends the coronavirus because that's what I prayed for. So there you go. I want my credit if this reverses the whole COVID thing, okay? I mark my words, July 3rd, 2020. This is the day it stops, thanks to me. And thanks for me saying goodbye to this goat as an offering. All right? And with that said, if you like this video, thumbs up. Better yet, subscribe because there's a lot of other videos, especially as we're stranded here in Ilocos and making the most of it by eating, mostly just eating. And sometimes dad cooks, so do more videos of that. And so I bid you adieu for now, and the empire never ended.